As I have been training for the last 30 years across the United States on how and why men and women communicate the way they do, I seem to get the same seven questions when I train in this area. And I think it tells us a lot about people's attitudes and predispositions toward gender. How and why do men and women communicate the way they do? So the first question I get, we can all relate to this, is the nature-nurture question. Audrey, weren't we just born this way? There's nothing we can do about it. It's hardwired in our DNA. Or did we learn to be this way? As boys and girls, did we get messages from the environment that say, this is all right for women to do, this is how men should behave? You know those saying, boys will be boys. So when we look at the nature nurture, it's really a combination of both. When I was training for the U.S. Marine Corps in Camp Pendleton, I had a sergeant say, Audrey, I can put a man in the cockpit and he gets it, the visual spatial. Well, there is a nature, there's a lot of evidence, DNA evidence that says Men are hardwired and better at visual spatial. Women tend to be good at language acquisition, and that has a lot to do with the cognitive process and the flexibility of going right to left brain hemisphere. So it's really a combination of the messages we get from the environment and how it interfaces with the hardwired DNA predispositions we have. So it's a combination of both. Here's the next question. I get this all the time, particularly when I'm doing radio and TV interviews. Audrey, what style is better? Are men better communicators or women? And you're not supposed to say this. You've heard this. There's no such thing as a dumb question. I think this is a dumb question because it's the wrong question to ask. Which style is better, men or women's? Really, from a communication standpoint, we should be saying, what is the appropriate communication for this particular context? So both men and women have different skill sets, different talents in communication. But the context should be dictating, what do I do here? Should I be a little bit more direct to the point, use data, statistics? That's more of a male style. Should I incorporate some stories here? That's more of a female style. So both styles are good styles. Here's another big question I get. Now, come on, Audrey. When we look at communication, is gender really that important in defining how people interact with each other. So when we look at any communication interaction, there are a host of demographic variables. What is the age of the people involved? So for example, I would certainly speak differently to a seven-year-old than I would a 70-year-old. So that's one demographic variable. Socioeconomic status, power. Am I talking to a colleague? Am I talking to my manager? So What we have found out is gender is highly significant, really impacts that interpersonal communication. It's generally in one of the top three in defining how we communicate. Now, here's a really big question that a lot of people are concerned about, and it often answers the question of why am I even sitting in this program? The question is, can men and women learn to change, and adapt their styles. Haven't we been this way forever? So the answer to that is, of course they can change. But who makes that decision? We all do individually. Anytime I'm training, conducting a keynote, I'm going to assume the audience is open to, I want to do better. I want to enhance my communication. What can I change? What can I tweak? So can men and women learn to change? Of course. But is that a private individual decision? Yes. No one can make that decision for them. Here's another one. 
are there individual differences as well as gender? So some people might say, you know, women are supposed to be quiet, uh, almost like children, only talk when they're spoken to or they're soft-spoken. I'm not like that, Audrey. I'm a woman and I'm gregarious and outgoing. So are there individual differences? Of course. We have people who are introverted. We have people who are extroverted and a whole host of personality characteristics. People will ask me, who acts? as though they're responsible for effective gender communication. Is it women who take that responsibility or men? And this is a very interesting idea. I know it with even my three books, is that my publishers have said, Audrey, you realize 80% of the people that are going to buy your book are going to be women. So a part of women's gender sex role is that we are the social maintenance people. We take care of people and relationships at work. Who do we get to organize and host the baby shower for someone in the office who's getting ready to have a child? It's women. Who makes sure everybody gets a birthday card? It's the women in the office. I always share a fun story that I like, which is who buys 80% of the Mother's Day cards, the number one card day in the United States. It's women. I know at home for myself with my husband, I say, I'm going to buy the card. It stops there. Every mother knows their child's handwriting. So you are the one that has to address the envelope and you've got to write a couple of sentences of why you love your mother. A final question I get is, haven't things changed in gender relationships? Aren't we different? Haven't we evolved? And certainly when we look at the last 30, 40 years of the influx of women into the workplace, we know home and work life have changed dramatically. We know today that the majority of women will spend at least 20 to 25 years working outside the home. I have men tell me, when I started in this organization, there wasn't a female manager. Today, my manager is a woman. So things have changed. I think it's important to ask, have we arrived? Are we there yet? Remember when you used to take those long car rides and you would say to your parents, are we going to get there anytime soon? When are we going to get there? So I think things have changed, but have we arrived? Not quite. We still are looking for more change, more representation, more equity between men and women in their relationships, at work, and at home.